Saturday morning on Power Talk, 1460 and 101 FM. It's time to kick off the experts program. Luis Alvarez joining us right now. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Doing really well. Thank you for joining us. Are you going to be able to work on the boat this weekend, or is it going to be too rainy for you? Too too rainy. I'm looking forward to uh, the long-term forecast says next Saturday is going to be a good day. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm hoping that I can get in some time. I'm also thinking about taking the uh, Friday afternoon off to get out there and get a head start. Oh, nice. It doesn't rain. We have talked a few times about uh, the impending rollout of 5G wireless technology, and one of the areas that we focused in on is that there seems to be a, a burgeoning grassroots movement in communities across the country to stop the implementation of the 5G antenna systems, and, and apparently because the frequencies that they transmit at and uh, receive at are so much higher than the 4G and 3G band, of, mm-hmm. this means that the antennas must be much closer together, so that means many more of them in neighborhoods all over the country. And um, as we mentioned, a lot of communities are passing ordinances to try and stop this implementation. They're using fears of visual blight and also uh, what they perceive to be health concerns by opposing these. And for a while, the cellular industry has kind of just laid back and taken it. But you have Mm -hmm. a story here that Verizon is coming out swinging now. What's happening? Because of all the concerns that you just expressed, the uh, wireless carriers, now that 5G is really on the cusp of being rolled out, are starting to fight back. In particular, Verizon has set up a, a website called Let's5G.com. So L-E-T-S-5, the, the number 5G.com. And it's intended to, to basically get people to sign a petition and learn more about 5G and, and, and let Verizon do a little bit of uh, agitation on their side of getting uh, 5G rolled out. And it talks about all the benefits of 5G and, and how it's the future and, and how awesome it's going to be and how terrible it is that some people want to keep progress from from mm-hmm. happening and you know sign our petition so that we can take it to your congress critters and and uh, let them know that community does support us and, and it's just a small fringe of people that are fighting the inevitable progress that is 5g so right um, now it's an advocacy campaign but exactly uh, what about court actions at a certain point at&t verizon and the rest of them are going to have to go to court to seek remedies oh absolutely and i think you'll see that especially if they they start to advocate against existing installations. So, you know, the, the initially the 5G network is going to start with where the 4G network exists and antennas are going to be upgraded and replaced. But even the, some community members don't want that. As you pointed out, they, they claim that there's some sort of uh, health hazard and they're going to fight it. But, uh, you know, Verizon and at t and all the other carriers are just going to say, hold it. This is stuff that, that we have in place and we're allowed to upgrade them when necessary. So, right. And then where you will see some real interesting court battles will be where they have to add new facilities and where they're going to be contracting with private because you know a lot of the uh, the antenna sites that carriers use are private property and people lease that property to the carriers so that they can set up their their antennas so now not only are you going to be you know if you're against the rollout of 5g not only are you going up against the carriers you're going up against private citizens who are trying to make a buck maybe because they have you know a tall building or maybe because they happen to live on a hill and, and uh, have a great a line of sight and Verizon or, or AT&T wants to use that. So it's going to be a really interesting situation, especially because you have a lot of business concerns on the other side who are champing at the bit to get 5G rolled out so that they can take advantage of the additional bandwidth and the additional uh, capacity of, of 5G. So the battle will be joined here shortly and it will be an interesting one for sure. We'll keep an eye on that one for sure. It's going to affect everything everyone. Let's move on to our other stories today. Out of the New York Times, a story that India is proposing vast new amounts of control over internet and internet users in its country, something very akin to Chinese censorship. Yep. India is not alone. Russia is is trying to do the same thing. And uh, there are other uh, countries around the world that have started to take notice that the internet is this huge free-flowing information source. And some countries, in particular uh, countries where they have more autocratic rule like China and and Russia, Mm -hmm. they would like to censor what their population, what their citizens see. And they've been looking at at China as as the model. You know, China has this thing called the Great Firewall of China, which is essentially a chokehold where all traffic coming in and out of China has to go through these specific exchanges. It's actually not just one firewall, by the way, but a series of connections throughout 
the, the country where external internet access comes into the country and, and they control all of that. And if you want to do business in China, whether you're Google or Facebook or anybody else, you have to adhere to their rules, which gives the, the Chinese government a significant amount of control over the content and, and the kind of things that get posted on, on social media or, or uh, on search sites. So India looks at that and says, hey, that would be pretty cool if we could control the, the content that our population can see so that we can keep, uh, for example, articles against the government uh, from being published or people from outside of India who maybe are critical of the Indian government uh, post, you know, having the ability of, of, of being seen in the country. Uh, and Russia is doing the same thing. In fact, Russia is um, going so far as to test basically disconnecting from the internet for uh, a while to see what effect that would have on their internal communications because they've passed a law that uh, would do something similar to what China is doing and uh, they just want to make sure that, that it can be done. So it's an interesting experiment but mm. one that we're seeing more and more around the world. So Russia's doing or planning to do something they call a sovereign internet where if you live in Russia and you want to go on the internet, does that mean you would not be able to see any websites from the U.S. or anywhere else in the world? You would only be able to see Russian websites? You would you'd be able to see other things outside of Russia, but only if the Russian government approves it. Okay. So in essence, they want to create their own great firewall and control what is being seen from outside the country. And especially, you know, Russia has, a unlike India, which is a pretty uh, modern democracy, they have a little bit of autocratic <laughs> nature to them. But, you know, Russia is a full on oligarchy where a very few like to control the, the entire population. And they are concerned that all of these people that live outside the country, people who have, you know, either self-exiled or have been exiled, former Russian citizens that are very loud in their advocacy to overthrow the current Russian government, they have a, a, a voice in mm -hmm. Russia and they want to silence mm -hmm. that voice and they figure this is a, a way to do that. All and, right. uh, you know, they also want to just test the fact that they can be free of the rest of the world and survive. One other thing to mention here, Russia is going to try this as an experiment, so it may be permanent, it may not, but um, this would impact the ability of users to receive internet traffic. Now, what about the hackers that are based in Russia that <laughs> run all these types of scams and schemes on unsuspecting net users across the globe? Will their ability to access and, and continue to do their business, would that be impacted by the Russians having a quote-unquote sovereign internet? Well, you know, I suspect that they're going to make certain exceptions to uh, what traffic can leave or, or come in. And uh, those guys are going to have the ability to continue to do their malfeasance because it benefits the Russian government. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, as long as it benefits the Russian government, why not let it go on? So you're saying that Vlad might have a piece in the action. I'm thinking he does. All I'm right. thinking uh, either Vlad or somebody close to him that, that uh, is influential enough to say, hey, let these guys continue to do their job. By the way, as a kind of an unrelated note, a piece of the action is the title of a great Star Trek original series episode, right? Uh, with Bella Oxmix. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the one where they go to that, um, gosh, what was that planet? It was like stuck back in the 1920s Chicago. Yeah, yeah they had, they had uh, aliens had seen this TV broadcast and decided that's but what no, they wanted to be. It was a book. Yeah, the book, that's right. That's that's right, and it, you know, like uh, maybe a, a previous Earth uh, ship had come and visited, and one of the things they left was a book about gangs in, in Chicago of the 1920s, and it became the Bible for yeah. these guys. That And as I recall, Call uh, great character actors Vic Tabak, who is Mel on the Alice TV show, you know, where he ran the diner. Mm -hmm. Vic yep. Tabak and Anthony Caruso starred in that. Uh, Jojo Cracko. That's who. Man, Jojo Cracko. Yeah, yeah. Vic Tabak was Jojo Cracko, and uh, Bella Oxmix was uh, the um, Anthony Caruso character. Oh, I love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an internet poll the other day on Facebook. Favorite TOS episode. And I have to Amazing. put that one in. Yeah. One of my favorites. <laughs> I know you're a Trekkie as well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, actually enjoying the, the new uh, series this year. Uh, I've heard people kind of talk about that. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a throwback to that uh, mm -hmm. that first series. And it's a lot of fun. All right, get the popcorn. <laughs> exactly. Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, our guest on Saturday morning as we kick off the Experts Program. Stick around because Edward King is coming up in just a couple of minutes, but uh, let's go ahead and let you know that it's AlvarezTG.com on the web. At AlvarezTG is the Twitter handle. And Luis, the toll-free number for the I-Team. Give us a call at 866-78-I-Team. That's 866-784-8326.